Aubrey Davis. And in this special edition of WETA Arts, we highlight African American artists in the DC area and their work for change. Who made it possible? Eastern High School alumni are rehearsing for a concert at the National Church of God in Fort Washington. Many have traveled long distances to relive their high school choir experience. DC documentarian Malkia Lydia is dedicated to telling the reunion choir story. I'm in love with stories about my city and about my communities. I'm in love with stories that show the complexity of life, black life, black neighborhoods some friends were sharing about the reunion concert and I immediately got excited. I sent this message out on Facebook saying, DC, yo, everybody, this is something we need to support. This is going to be amazing. Y'all remember Eastern's Choir? Eastern's Choir rose to fame in 1988 when the under-resourced inner city school won second place in an international choir competition in Vienna, Austria. I also said in that same post, somebody out there needs to make a film about this. That night, I could not sleep. I, I could not sleep. It was just, you have to make this film. This film is yours to make. You have to make this film. Driven by this calling, Lydia began to research the story. Her quest led her to the 1988 choir's director, Dr. Joyce Garrett. Some good ones still, like this one's good. That was the early years. The moment I talked to her, I knew this isn't just the story of Eastern's choir. Come on in, let me show you something. It's the story of an amazing educator. Lydia brought current Eastern choir students to a shoot at Dr. Garrett's house. The house contains 30 years worth of choir memorabilia. I want young people to understand the footsteps they're walking in. That's the value of preserving these stories and interpreting them and sharing Sitting down next to Dr. Garrett and looking through old photos, it's a history lesson for me. Because I always like to do something that was motivating, that make kids feel like they were learning something about moving forward in life. I grew up in Kinston, North Carolina, a small southern town. In the summertime, we all worked in tobacco, so I had no problem being motivated to go to college. Education was your way out. I wanted to teach on the high school level because I remember a teacher in my hometown, the choir she had and the sound she got out of that choir. The opportunity to go to Eastern High School, which looked like a castle at the corner of 17th East Capitol, that was like a dream come true for me. One of the reasons why this story is really important to me as a product of D.C. public schools, going away to college when people were, aren't you from the murder capital of the world? And I have a real strong desire to tell stories that complicate that picture. A lot of my students were not achieving to the level that they could achieve. That was my motivation, trying to see if I could use music to get that kind of achievement. When you learn how it feels to be successful, you can use that anywhere. When Dr. Garrett arrived at Eastern, she found just 10 students enrolled in concert choir. 25 were signed up for gospel choir. So I decided to make a rule to sing in the gospel choir. You had to be enrolled in the concert choir. So the sound is different. And then the repertoire is going to take you longer to learn. The competition Garrett set her sights on required difficult music in a variety of styles. We had to sing the Polyvetsian dances by Bordin, and Kyrie by Mozart, which is really wonderful. And then you could sing one song by a composer from your own country. And I chose William Dawson's spiritual, Ezekiel Saw the Wheel. While the students learned new music, the community raised the money required to get 54 students to the competition. Endless cake sales, car washes, and odd jobs raised the $160,000 for the trip to Vienna. Even with 
all of the well-advertised shortcomings, you know, that people think of when they think of D.C. during that time period, still life was rich and community was rich. We won the second place trophy and then came back. The chorus members got heroes welcomes when they flew in to Dallas Airport. Immediately we were called from the White House. Ronald Reagan wanted us to come sing a concert in the East Room. Live from the auditorium of Eastern High School in Washington, D.C., the Eastern Choir. And then the Today Show called. And then there was stories in Pew Magazine and every other kind of magazine. The last to be surprised on each row was Step High. When Garrett invited the singers from the 1988 choir to reunite 30 years later, word spread fast. And the other alumni students said, well, what about us? So that's how it ended up being 275 singers from 1972 to perhaps 2006 when I finally was not working anymore with the Eastern Choir. It evolved into something really wonderful, and I'm so glad that they insisted that it be that way. I think that opportunity to celebrate that 30 year anniversary was also just an opportunity to see her young people again. She's been a mentor, a second mother, you know, a counselor, a friend to so many of them, and even a professional colleague to many who have gone on to be choir directors and musical directors in their own right. And gospel artist from Atlanta, Vera Okoro, class of 95. Oh. More than 3,000 people went to hear the reunion of the legendary choir. To listen to them sing, to hear the impact of the choir experience, of the educators, the parents who fought to make sure this is a reality for them, like all of that kind of stuff stirs me. And I can't imagine that there aren't like thousands of other people out there who also want to hear these stories and hear this music and celebrate along with the alumni and Dr. Garrett. The opportunity to impact what people remember about community life, to not just impact our memories, but also to impact, you know, what we imagine is possible for the future. I mean, what better job is there than that?